Hello students, let us see this problem. This problem was the 14th problem of one week challenge problem that I had given. So if you haven't seen this problem, it is probably the right time to pause this video and start doing this problem on your own. And if you have tried it, so let us see the solution, right? So what this question says that there are infinite many identical batteries. So these are the batteries I'm talking about. These are the batteries. I'm talking about and these batteries are non-ideal batteries that means they must be having some internal resistance as well also there are infinite many identical voltmeters so these are the voltmeters here and the readings of this voltmeter are in gp right so this question says that the lower leftmost voltmeter has a reading of 15 volt or v simply v and just to the right of that has a reading of uh, the previous reading divided by eta term so for the simplicity we will call this eta as n right so this has a reading of v by n obviously the next to that will have a reading of v by n square and so on so these are the readings given we have to determine the emf of the cell right that is what we have to determine in this question so let's move on to solve this question right so here what I can take the advantage of that this lower line, this whole lower line is on a conductor. So these all must be on the same potential, right? So what I can say that potential of these all points is actually zero. That I can assume, right? So let's say these are potential zero points. Obviously the leftmost point, this point here, must be at potential V because that is what is the potential difference uh, across this leftmost voltmeter is right so this the reading of the voltmeter is essentially the potential drop across that voltmeter right so this point ha is at p potential v this point naturally will be at potential v by n right so this point here will be at potential v by n is square and so on so let us call these points let us give them some number right so let's say this is at point, this is point 0.1, this is point 0.2 and this is point 0.3, right? So on the in the leftmost part, let us say the current is I. Obviously here the current will also be I because there is no junction in between. In the second voltmeter, the current will be I by N. How can I say that? Because the potential is 1 by N times the current must also be 1 by n times because the reading of the voltmeter is essentially current times resistance and since all the potentiometers are of same resistance they are identical the current must be forming a gp similarly in this the current will be equal to i by n square and so on right so what we can write here if i want to determine the current in the second battery here what should be the value of current you can just apply the junction rule at this junction right at point number two the total incoming current must be equal to total out outgoing so outgoing is i plus i by n so here the current will be i plus i by n that can be written as i times n plus one by n right so this will be the current here so if i want to write the equation of potential drop from point number one to point number two how should i write it so the potential at point one is v now we are moving from positive to negative terminal of the battery so minus e again there is a internal resistance also so we are moving opposite to the direction of current so we have plus sign here plus i into small r and that must be equal to potential of point 2 that is v by n so this is our first equation similarly if i want to write the equation from point number 2 to point number 3 point number 2 to point number 3 i can write the potential of point number 2 that is v by n again against the battery so minus e plus current which is i times n plus 1 by n multiplied by resistance r 
and that will be equal to potential of point 3 that will be equal to v by n square now if i multiply this whole term by n plus n into n plus 1 what will i get v by n plus 1 minus n e by n plus 1 plus i r equals v by n times n plus 1 let us call this equation to be equation number 2 why did i do that because i do not want to solve for small i or small r we have to determine the value of e in terms of v so i should be trying to eliminate small i and small r so i can just subtract equation number one from equation number two what will i get equation number two minus equation number one so v by n plus one minus v plus e minus n e by n plus one and that should be equal to v by n into n plus one minus v by n so let us take the e terms towards the left right so i'll be getting e by n plus one e by n plus one equal to if i take common v and the common denominator will become n into n plus one so the first term here will contain one the second term here will contain minus of n minus of one here the third term of this n plus one part will become minus of n here this term will become positive and it will have all the denominator part right so plus n square plus n right so what i'm getting here let us cancel whatever is getting cancelled this minus n plus n again this minus 1 plus 1 so we are getting n square minus n i can take n common and it will become n times n minus 1 by n times n plus 1 so from here i can write from here i can write e by n plus 1 equal to v times n minus 1 by n plus 1 right so n plus 1 obviously gets cancelled so we are getting the value of e as n minus 1 into v now we know the value of v 15 volt and we know the value of n 1.1 so we are getting 0.1 into 15 that is 1.5 volt the emf of these identical batteries is 1.4 5 volt and that is our answer